What's up guys, Jordan here with today's review of Room Factory 4 Special on the Switch. But as a quick heads up, this review was written by our man on the website Jason, so these are his words, not mine, as I'm sure you'll guess with his far more elegant vocabulary than myself. Let's find out what he thinks. Room Factory 4 Special is an upgraded port of the original 3DS version that came out in 2012. Here we are about 8 years later, and Marvelous is trying to revive the series on the Switch by test driving this port. The 3DS version received some pretty good reviews back in its day, but I am curious, how well did this game age? And is this special version a reason to return to Selfia or not? Well, there's only one way to find out, so let's dive in and review Room Factory 4 Special on the Switch. In a traditional Japanese RPG storytelling way, Room Factory 4 Special opens with your character transporting goods on a cargo ship. Some idiotic baddies have found their way on board, and in a moment, they kick you off. Thankfully, you don't die. Instead, you plummet into a lovely little town called Selfia, and right on top of a dragon named Venetswell. It is here that we suffer amnesia and cannot remember who we are or what we're doing. Shockingly, the game's opening, despite its traditional storytelling, drags on for way too long. The amount of gameplay I experienced in the first 30 minutes of the game was roughly uh, 10 seconds, otherwise I was stuck behind reading text after text after text. If the story was more engaging, I would not have minded, but since Room Factory 4's special story is nothing to write home about, it made the opening a lot more sour than I anticipated. The story casually puts you in a position where you become a prince or princess, and are responsible for various things. You'll farm, you'll pander to the townspeople, and you'll be tasked with riding monsters or investigating strange occurrences. This makes your character feel important, but it also seems like a random means to give you lots of responsibilities that you seemingly don't deserve. Despite this, interacting with the villagers is wonderful. Learning about their likes and dislikes helps you know what presents to give them and how to level up your relationships. In Room Factory 4 Special, developing these relationships is especially important because marriage can become a major part of the story. It's not a necessity, so no need to feel pressured, but it is a fun little addition that plays into one of the new modes, Newlyweds modes. Also, there are 12 potential suitors which can really add a lot of extra time to the game. It needs to be said that Newlyweds mode only becomes available once you marry one of the 12 potential people in the actual game. It is not available from the start. On top of Newlyweds mode, there's also another episode, which has 13 available side stories. There's only one available from the get-go, and it seems like the other 12 are a lot behind an eShop purchase. From the available one, it does not seem like there's any gameplay, just dialogue and story development. Overall, in regards to story, it is wide and varied. You get a casual story experience of caring for the kingdom, a more traditional JRPG story experience through mysterious developments regarding dragons and runes, and you get some love stories through a pursuit of marriage. There is a lot to offer in regards to Room Factory 4's story, that is for sure. Room Factory 4 Special is a bizarre mix of differing genres when it comes to gameplay. The best label I could find for the game was a fantasy farm simulator, but even that is a bit of an undersell. This game is basically a jack of all trades and a master of none, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. What I mean is that we have a farming simulator in the same vein as Harvest Moon, but Room Factory 4 Special is not nearly as good as Harvest Moon in that regards. It has RPG elements and a battle system similar to that of Kingdom Hearts, but it's not even remotely as good as Kingdom Hearts in that area, of course. And it is a fun little life simulator with so much borrowed from games like Animal Crossing, yet it is not nearly as efficient at doing this as Animal Crossing. But the fact that it contains so much variety in the package is what gives it strength. Sure, it may not be the best farming simulator, or the best RPG, or the best life simulator, but it does all of those things well, and it makes the world feel more organic than those other titles mentioned. There is a lot that I can talk about in this review, but since the gameplay can be split between three major areas, I figured I could share each about those. Starting with farming. In my opinion, farming is probably the weakest point of the game. It just never felt necessary, and although I spent a lot of time on the multiple available farms throughout my game, I found myself neglecting them for long periods of time with little to no consequence. There are lots of seeds to find and buy, each of them providing different plants and flowers for your garden. Growing flowers was my favourite because it really did look beautiful when an assortment would bloom all together. I just honestly did not focus on much else because food was so easily available elsewhere. The process of farming does feel a bit like a chore, as it should be, I mean it's farming, but it was because of this that I neglected my farms very often. For those who enjoy these type of simulators, I think Room Factory 4 Special's farming system works well enough, but it's nothing to brag about, it gets the job done I suppose. 
combat and fighting in Rune Factory 4 is simple. There is one attack button and you basically just keep spamming it until enemies die. There are a lot of enemy types which does vary the combat and you'll be getting all sorts of different weapons to mix things up as well. Although it may be simple, it can still be fun. Boss fights feel much bigger than other combat situations, but they are honestly not that hard. I only find myself in dire situations only a handful of times throughout the game. However, I do have to admit that I play very carefully and heal often, and I also level up appropriately for such games. Since enemies, including bosses, do not strike so quickly, healing yourself in the midst of combat is not that difficult, so do it as often as you need. One last thing about combat is friending monsters. This was one of my favourite things to do in the game because it's basically kind of like Pokemon in a bizarre way. You can approach just about any monster in the game and offer them a present. If they hate it, they'll try and attack you. If they love it, they will become your friend and offer to protect you or give assistance in battle. This really helped mix things up while battling. Giving the player options to fight or befriend any monster just made each encounter feel more meaningful. Initially, the living aspect of Rune Factory 4 Special is the most confusing. You are made into a prince or princess by the Dragon Venetswell, and you are given the task of improving the kingdom and impressing the various residents. There is a board sitting beside Venetswell uh, that gives you royal tasks to do such as creating festivals, upgrading your storage and getting various licenses. It is a lot of fun and it feels like Animal Crossing New Leaf in regards to responsibilities. People will also request all kinds of things of you through the request box located in the centre of the kingdom. Completing these requests will improve your relationship with the person who requested it and offer some reward. And that's about it. Requests range from farming requests to ridding monsters to cosmetic improvements. It helps to keep you busy if you feel like there's nothing else to do. On top of that, there are just a lot of activities to do and resources to collect. Similarly to that of Animal Crossing, fishing, cutting for wood and mining rocks all get you valuable materials that can be used for all sorts of things. Cutting wood and mining rocks were definitely a bit annoying at times, especially if you did not have enough of those resources to complete a task. It just made certain things take a little bit longer. Room Factory 4 Special is a very beefy game and although it's not top grade beef, it's still enjoyable and helps pass the time well. There's just so much to do. Before we move on to other sections of this review, as stated, this review was written by Jason who is the boss man of our website, and he and we, myself, Quan and James, are looking for more game writers for those looking to get into the scene. Firstly on our website and perhaps even move on to video reviews like Jason has for us. If you're interested, just email us in at editors at switchwatch.co.uk to show your interest. Alright, let's get back to the review. The music in Room Factory 4 Special is amazing. From the stellar opening song to the various overworld and dungeon themes, the game is such a pleasure to listen to and enjoy. It may not be the most memorable music for an RPG, farming sim, life simulator thing, but it absolutely serves its purpose and does so well. There is a little bit of voice acting, so it is difficult to review it fairly. Since this was a 3DS title initially, the vocals are scattered around the dialogue and are often only used to say other characters' names during story segments. It was not bad at all, and I actually thought both the English and Japanese voices were great, but I honestly wanted more of it. Maybe in the next Room Factory we will get more proper full on voice acting to help liven up the story even more. Although Room Factory 4 Special is an upgrade of the original 3DS version, I did not find the visuals to be impressive at all. It is definitely an improvement over 3DS, but it feels well behind other Nintendo Switch titles, including other ports. It does not look bad mind you, but it doesn't look good either. Although this was a port from the 3DS to the Switch, I felt more like I was playing a GameCube game. In regards to performance, however, the game ran flawlessly and every transition was silky smooth. There is no slowdown whatsoever and I did not experience a single technical issue in my dozens of hours playing. Now, right out of the gate, Room Factory 4 Special is going to run you $39.99 in the US, £32.99 in the UK and £39.99 in Europe. That does feel a little bit pricey for an upgrade of a 3DS title. But hold on, this version of the game is absolutely the definitive version. Not only is it upgraded from the original, but it also has multiple new modes and lots of major improvements. On top of that, this game will easily give you well over 50 hours of gameplay to complete simple base stuff. If you want to clear everything, you're looking at like something crazy like 200 hours of gameplay. That is a lot of bang for your buck. For those who played the original on the 3DS, there may not be a whole lot of reason to revisit, but if you are new to the series or missed out on the original, Room Factory 4 Special is a great introduction and a worthy game for your Nintendo Switch. 
As I have said multiple times, Rune Factory 4 is not the best at anything it is trying to do, but it is the best at doing them all at the same time. Where else are you going to find a game that offers farming, dungeon crawling, and kingdom management and does all of those decently? I will await your response. Maybe Stardew Valley? Sorry, that's me, Jordan. Anyway, Rune Factory 4 Special is still a good game all these years later. Its entry into the Switch library is a welcome one, but it's not amazing in any of its parts. However, it does all of its parts very well and provides a massive experience in the process. Although the visuals did not age well, it still looks fine and plays great too. New modes give this already packed game even more reason to keep revisiting Selfium, and multiple potential marriages give the game a ton of replay value. Great gameplay, fantastic soundtrack, good relationship building, befriending monsters, it's a 7.5 out of 10. Thanks to Jason for writing this review and capturing his gameplay for us. Be sure to head over to the website for more excellent Switch content that we just don't have time to convert into a video. Also, have a watch of Juan's 10 reasons to be excited video about this game. Plus, here is another video that YouTube thinks you may enjoy. We'll see you guys over there. Take care.